Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to begin reading this cool book, What's Weird on Earth. Sorry for the jiggle right there. This book is really cool. It's got some great maps in it. We've seen this series before. I did um, these two books. And, um, I did part of this a long time ago. I feel like I should come back to it, but it has those really, really cool maps that I like to trace on. So let's just dive right into the first chapter. The first, oops, I almost brought, well, you've seen the title. <laughs> the first section will be about nature. So let's talk about how weird nature is. These are glowworms in a cave, apparently, in New Zealand. So our first section is just naturally weird. Grab this. From rocks that ring like bells to bright red grass and rivers hot enough to boil a frog, there are some very strange things on earth. Even scientists can't work out how some of them exist. Let's see the first box we have over here. Northern Lights. Seen in far northern night skies, these multicolored streams of light are caused by charged particles from the sun colliding with the Earth's atmospheric gases. So beautiful. Let's take a look around the Earth and see some naturally weird nature. First, we have Fly Geyser in Nevada, the U.S. These algae-covered geyser cones formed after water was struck during oil drilling. We have the Cave of the Crystals in Nyika, Mexico. Giant crystals, some more than 33 feet long, grow in a deep cavern. The Ringing Rocks Park in Pennsylvania, U.S. The rocks in this park make a musical ringing sound when struck with a hammer. The Boiling River in the central Peruvian Amazon. Reaching temperatures above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, this stretch of the Amazon River boils any animal that falls into it. The Salar de Uyuni in Bolivia. At 4,086 square miles, this is the world's largest salt flat. We have the fairy circles in the Namib Desert, Namibia. It is thought that these disks of bare red ground scattered over the desert are the work of termites. That's pretty weird. Up here we have the petrifying well in Yorkshire, England. Objects placed in this well are turned to stone by dripping mineral water. The Movila cave in Costanza County, Romania. Strange, creepy crawlies thrive in this cave, which is full of poisonous gases. The Dead Sea, the border of Israel and Jordan. The water here contains so much salt that swimmers can float without any effort. The Sulphur Lakes of the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia. At this location, the hottest place on Earth, near boiling springs deposit sulfur and minerals in colorful formations. We have the Kawa Ijen volcano in Java, Indonesia. Dissolved metals turn the crater lake of this volcano a vivid turquoise blue. The red beach in Panjin, China. Rare grasses turn this marshland an unbelievably bright crimson. The chocolate hills in Bohol, Philippines. In the dry season, hundreds of low, conical green hills on this island change into a rich chocolate brown. And the morning glory clouds in northern Australia. This rare cloud formation, like giant cotton wool rolls, can extend for 260 miles. There's some facts down here too. It says it can take three to five months to turn a teddy bear to stone in the petrifying well in Yorkshire, UK. And then the long fact that's always on the bottom of these books, which is too hard to get into frame, says that a single wave, 13 feet or 4 meters high, called the Povaroka, rolls up the Amazon River twice a year as far as 500 miles inland. Next we have Nature's Sculptures. 
Not all great works of art are seen in museums and galleries. Around the world, beautiful, bizarre, and breathtaking rock sculptures have been created not with tools, but by natural forces, such as wind and water, over long stretches of time. So the box over here talks about Utah's red rocks, which are located right here. The red rocks of southern Utah create some of the most astonishing geological landscapes in the world. The Delicate Arch is the largest arch and the most visited feature in Arches National Park. In Monument Valley, steep, flat-topped hills called buttes rise up to 1,000 feet above the desert floor. Balanced Rock in Arches National Park is a fine example of the rock shapes known as hoodoos. The town of Mexican Hat, near the San Juan River, is named after this rock outcropping that looks like a sombrero. The spectacular pink cliffs are a favorite subject for photographers in Bryce Canyon National Park. And Devil's Garden, a small and easy to explore area near the city of Escalante, is full of rocky wonders. Let's see what else there is. Here's some more hoodoos. These are in Banff, Canada. These mysterious rock pillars were probably named for a traditional type of folk magic. We have the Wave in Arizona and Utah, U.S. These sandstone dunes ripple in multicolored bands of rock. Survival Beach in Puerto Rico. There. Extraordinary rock formations add mystery to this hidden beach. Rainbow Mountain in Peru. It is a tough hike to the top of this sacred candy-striped mountain in the Andes. Rock Tree in the Siloli Desert, Bolivia. Winds over tens of thousands of years have carved this volcanic rock into a tree-like shape. The Valley of the Moon in San Juan Province, Argentina. Cannonball rocks and pale sands make Ishikolasto National Park seem like a place from another world. The Matobo Hills in Zimbabwe. These distinctive rock formations cover much of Zimbabwe. The Eye of the Sahara in Huadane, Mauritania. This bull's eye rock formation in the desert is best seen from space. Torcal de Antequera in Andalusia, Spain. These impressive limestone formations are more than 150 million years old. The Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Ancient volcanic eruptions formed these spectacular basalt columns. The Canon Canisteinen Rock in Oppendal, Norway. Ocean waves have sculpted this rock into the shape of a mushroom. The Kumakivi in Finland. This balancing stone was churned up by retreating glaciers at the end of the last ice age. Pravchika Brana in the Czech Republic. With a span of 87 feet, this is Europe's largest natural sandstone arch. The White Desert of Farafra, Egypt. The rocks in this desert are chalk white in color. Al Nasla in Saudi Arabia. Split into two perfect halves, this huge standing stone is a geological puzzle. The Manpupuner Rocks in the Kumi Republic of Russia. Seven vast standing stones, some more than 130 feet tall, rear up from a grassy plateau. Krishna's Butterball in Mahambalipuram, India. This 20-foot high boulder looks as though it's ready to roll away. The Kunming Stone Forest in Yunnan Province, China. Limestone weathered over thousands of years formed a 155 square mile stone forest. The Gansu Zhangye National Geopark in northwest China. The sandstone formations in this national park are layered in beautiful paint box colors. The Immortal Bridge in Mount Tai, China. Three great boulders form a natural bridge above a deep ravine. 
the Queen's Head Rock in Taiwan. This sea-worn rock is said to look like the profile of the Tudor Queen Elizabeth I of England. The Devil's Marbles in Northern Territory, Australia. Round granite stones sacred to Australian Aboriginal people are scattered across a wide, shallow valley. The Totem Pole of Tasmania. This rock spire towers 213 feet out of the sea and the Moaraki boulders of Otago, New Zealand. Amazingly, these large round boulders which lie on the beach are hollow. And our fun fact at the bottom says, the oldest rock formations found on Earth were discovered in Canada and date back nearly 4.3 billion years. Next we have wild weather. Talking about the weather will never be boring again with these record-breaking weather events and unusual climatic phenomena. Some conditions are strange and beautiful, but others can be deadly. Let's look at this box up here about unusual weather. Strange weather phenomena are found in places with similar conditions around the world. They may create beautiful icy shapes or unusual cloud formations, or they may produce extreme storms, which are thankfully rare. We have ice circles. They form in slow-moving water in cold climates. The disks look like icy lily pads and can be up to 49 feet across. Twin tornadoes are unusual. They occur when two twisters from the same supercell touch the ground at the same time. And inversion clouds appear much nearer to the ground than usual, forming when a layer of cold air is trapped by a layer of warm air. And our little extra box down here is for Mount Washington, which is located right up here on the map. This peak in New Hampshire gets some extreme weather. There's not only heavy snow and freezing temperatures, but also strong winds. At the summit, there is a building held down with heavy chains. Interesting. Starting up here, we have Lost Lake in Oregon, US. This lake does a disappearing act each year when it empties down a hole left when it empties down a hole left by an old lava tube. Really interesting. The super outbreak in the US. A series of tornadoes in April 2011 across the eastern half of the US was the largest and costliest ever. On April 27th alone, there were 199 tornadoes. The beacon of Maracaibo in Venezuela. This area gets more lightning than anywhere else on Earth. There are strikes on 297 days every year, making it a very dangerous place to live. The Penitentes in Argentina and Chile. These strange spiky ice or snow formations appear at high altitudes in the Andes Mountains. They can reach over 16 feet high. The Moonbows of Victoria Falls in Zambia and Zimbabwe. When moonlight shines through the spray from Victoria Falls, it creates a silvery moonbow. The hottest inhabited place, look at the sun beating down, is in Dalal, Ethiopia, which we just talked about on the other page. Boiling hot and bone dry, this is a very difficult place to live. If it wasn't bad enough, there's also lots of volcanic activity here. The longest lasting lightning in Côte d'Azur, France. On August 30th, 2012, a single bolt of lightning lasted for 7.74 seconds, the longest ever recorded. Colored snow in Stavropol, Russia. The people of Stavropol, Russia woke up to purple snow one morning in 2010. Dust carried by a cyclone from Africa had mixed with snow clouds over Russia. The rainiest place is in Masinram, India. It rains a lot in the lush green hills of Masinram, a massive 467 inches a year. The deepest snowfall is on Mount Ibuki in Japan. 
during 1927, a huge 465.4 inches of snow was dumped on Mount Ibuki in Japan and sea foam in Lorne, Australia. There. A gigantic natural bubble bath with foam up to six feet high formed along the coast here in 2012. And our fact at the bottom says the coldest temperature recorded on Earth was negative 135.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 94.7 degrees Celsius. It was measured in East Antarctica in August 2010. Next, let's talk about lightning strikes. This map shows the frequency of lightning strikes around the world. Areas in warmer tropical climates, which is close to the equator, and those in the region of large mountain ranges, such as the Andes and Himalayas, are the most susceptible. So let's see, we have a little key here. Where I live in California, as you can see by the chart here, it never, we never see lightning. Um, what does it say? We get 0 0.2, 0 0.2 lightning strikes per year. So even one lightning strike, basically. Yeah, I haven't seen lightning since in almost two years. It's the last time there was lightning here. Anyway. Let's see some lightning facts. Most of the world's lightning activity takes place in tropical areas, but freak incidents can happen anywhere. The first one is in Shenandoah National Park in the U.S. It's right up here. It says park ranger Roy Sullivan holds the world record for surviving lightning strikes, seven between 1942 and 1997. The next one is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, which we just talked about on the other page. You can see how high the frequency is here. It says the world's lightning hotspot experiences an average of 232.5 flashes of lightning per square mile per year. Number three is Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. It says in 2014, a bolt of lightning broke a finger off the right hand of Rio's iconic statue of Christ the Redeemer. <laughs> Poor statue. Number four is in Essex, England. It says in 2009, 14 year old Sophie Frost survived when a bolt hit her MP3 player, diverting the power down the wires instead of through her body. That's interesting. Number five is in Gothenburg, Sweden. 12 year old Alice Svensson was hit by lightning twice while she was in the shower in 2011. Lightning had surged through the home's plumbing. Wow. New fear unlocked. That's great. Number six is in Kifuka in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It says Central Africa is the largest region to receive a lot of lightning. One village, Kifuka, struck at least 158 times a year. Look at that spike. Number seven is over here. It's in Dagar, Pakistan. A collision of warm and cold air in the Himalayan foothills makes us the sixth most struck place in the world. Number eight is just all of Indonesia, apparently. It just says Indonesia. <laughs> the mountain ranges in the Indonesian islands of Java and Sumatras are hot spots for lightning. And the last one is down here in Malabar, Australia. Unfortunate Joanne Nitschke has had her house struck three times by lightning in 20 years. This happened even though she moved house during that time. I think at that point, someone's sending you a message somewhere. Anyway, the, the little fact down here is literally the same fact as on the other page about how Lake Maracaibo gets um, 297 days of lightning a year. Interesting. All right, a whole page on the eruption disruption. In April 2010, planes were grounded as an enormous cloud of ash swept across Europe. Shown here at one of its worst moments on April 18th, the cloud continued to drift across the globe for the next few months, with parts of it even reaching as far as the eastern coast of North America, Northern Africa and Northeast Asia. Leave a comment if you were 
in Europe during this time or you had a flight affected by it. I want to hear stories about this eruption from you guys. So, Ayafialyogl erupts. This ice-topped volcano had been dormant for more than 180 years before it erupted in 2010. After a small initial eruption in March, an explosion near the summit on April 14th created a plume of ash more than six miles high. Over the following days and months, the ash created an enormous cloud that spread across the globe. So April 14th at 12 p.m., it looked like this. By midday, on the day of the eruption, the ash cloud was already drifting east. By 6 p.m. that day, it looked like this. By the evening, the cloud had drifted further into European airspace. By 6 a.m. the next day, goodness, the following day, the cloud was over parts of the UK and Scandinavia. The next day, 24 hours later, looked like this. Two days after the eruption, flights began to be significantly affected. And then the next day looked like this. Three days after the eruption, the cloud covered most of northern Europe. And then the next day it looked like this. My goodness, that's huge. It says April 18th, 6 a.m. By this point, the cloud had spread across most of Europe and into eastern Russia. Cloud Base As the cloud reached a temporary peak on April 18th, scientists estimated that the volcano was ejecting 750 tons of magma every single second. No fly zone. The ash cloud contained thousands of tiny particles of volcanic rock which it was thought could affect aircraft engines. About 75% of all European flights were cancelled as a safety precaution. And domino effect. With most European airports closed, 30% of all flights in Africa were also cancelled, along with 20% of those in the Middle East. And there's a little box here about Icelandic volcanoes. Iceland is home to more than a hundred volcanoes, with 30 or more of these thought to be active. Although the eruption of the Eyjafjallajökull was highly disruptive, it is actually one of the island's smaller volcanoes. So our fact at the bottom says, the eruption left more than 10 million people stranded and cost airlines a total of 1.7 billion dollars, or 1.3 billion pounds. Raining animals. Animals raining down on Earth may sound like the stuff of fiction, but it actually happens in real life. In fact, reports of animals mysteriously falling out of the sky abound throughout the world. Let's read the box first. It says, how does it happen? Animal showers are most likely caused by water spouts that form over the sea during storms and suck up marine life. The animals are then carried over land and when the wind drops, they fall to the ground. Let's start over here. <laughs> My goodness, what's happening over here? Uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, U.S. It says, Usually native to Florida, saltwater starfish rained down over Minnesota in April 1985. That's pretty cool. Virginia City in Nevada, U.S. Millions of wriggling angleworms fell over the city during a rainstorm in 1979. Oh boy. Fort Worth, Texas, U.S. In 1985, Texas resident Louis Castoreno claimed that a passing cloud dumped 34 small fish on him. In Charleston, South Carolina, U.S., in 1877, several baby alligators fell onto a farm and were still alive after they hit the ground. In Montreal, Canada, during Christmas in 1857, small lizards rained down over the city's pavements. In San Antonio de Platina in Brazil, I'm sure I butchered that, apologize, Santo Antonio de... Anyway, in 2013, a photographer captured images of thousands of spiders sprinkling down over shocked residents of this area in southern Brazil. That's terrifying. 
in Cabo Polonio in Uruguay. There have been two incidents of frogs raining down over this coastal hamlet since 2011. In the Falkland Islands, in 2011, a frozen squid fell from the sky and struck a fisherman who was trawling off the coast of the islands. It's pretty unlucky. In Deir Dawa, Ethiopia, in 2000, the people of the city thought a shower of fish that lasted several minutes was a divine blessing. In Halmstad, Sweden, rain that fell on this port city in 1924 included red worms. Swansea in the UK, after a hailstorm in September 1981, Cliff Davies found a dozen crabs on his lawn. That's so random. Uh-oh, Hungarian. You know we're gonna do Hungary next week and I've been practicing my Hungarian? Uh, but it's still really difficult. Rakoshvalva. In 2010, residents of this town were stunned when a thunderstorm brought down a shower of frogs. If you're new to my channel, I do the history. I'm doing the history of every country in the world. So Hungary's next on the list, and I'm deep into trying to figure out the language. It's a it's a bizarre one. Anyway, in Pokrov, Russia, a shower of insects with flat, shiny heads fell over this Russian town in 1827. Oh my gosh, this has a bug is crawling up my wall right now as I was reading that. Look at there's topple. Ah, what are the odds of that? The bugs are attracted to my light. Well, big old pincher bug, you get to just hang out on my wall, I guess. There he goes. Okay, that's happening right in front of me. Meanwhile, in Kandanasari, in India, a downpour over this village in 2008 included thousands of small fish. It's gone. <laughs> Bug's gone. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna move my feet up off the floor because that's a pincher bug. And we're gonna have to end on this page so I can find the bug. Make sure it doesn't pinch me. <laughs> anyway, moving on <laughs> to Madesh, Nepal. Small fish fell over this village in May 1900. In Singapore, in 1861, a shower of fish fell in the city-state during three days of torrential rain. In Lombok, Indonesia, in 1969, farmers saw rats fall from the sky and then scatter across the fields. In Lajamanu, Australia, hundreds of fish bombarded residents of this outback town in 2010. That's so in the outback. where they come from? Anyway, in Goldburn, Australia, oh no, not again, millions of tiny spiders fell over the New South Wales countryside in 2015 and blanketed the area with their webs. Blech. I don't like that. I'd rather have a pincher bug somewhere on my floor. And spiders are down, anyway. The little fact down here says, in Euro Honduras, a shower of fish, locally known as Via de Peces, occurs between May and July every year. Right. So, I have to wrap this up because I'm not going to be able to relax if there's a bug on the floor that could pinch my little toes. So, I'm going to have to cut it short tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you at least have a very good, 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 good night. Good night. Did I get him? No. Come here. Come on. In you go. Now don't crawl out. Okay, good. Okay. There's the bug. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Success.